All right, guys, welcome back to Stuck on an Island, where I'm stuck with you, but we are always smiling. But on today's vlog, it's going to be a bee vlog. I'm going to be beekeeping today. So if you don't like bees, you're afraid of them, and you don't want to see anything about them, wait for tomorrow's vlog. Thanks for clicking on this video, though. <laughs> but anyway, guys, um, today's vlog, I'm going to be actually be feeding my hives. I'm going to be talking about feeding my hives and how to feed your hive. Um, the reason why I'm going to do that is because a couple years ago, I used to do beekeeping. Um, you know, like a hobbyist, I had maybe the most 12 hives. Now, I only have 5 hives at the moment, and I want to end this year with 20 hives. That is my goal for this year. And I want to get to March with 7, so I need 2 more hives. At the moment, it's now January 12. Now, that's why feeding comes into play. Now, people might want to know, why do you feed a hive and all of that? Now, you pretty much feed a hive especially when it's a starter hive when it's only like five frame of bees and it's very weak of course you need to feed them to pretty much give them a starting hand so that's pretty much why you feed a hive um also you feed a hive as well to get their numbers up in in layman terms if you think about um building a house if two persons were building a house it would take forever right because there's only two persons now the more people that are building the house is the faster the house get built it's the same thing with um beekeeping or honey production if you want your hives to get a lot of honey for you really quick it means that you have to start preparing them you have to feed them so their numbers grow up so when it gets to the summer season it pretty much will have a lot of bees to collect the honey a lot faster so it's you know pretty much speaks on efficiency also if you want to get more bees to split you have to feed them now um, today's feed that I'm going to be making is going to be what we call a two to one two to one pretty much means two parts for me it's going to be two part water and one part sugar it might be a little bit over more more than one part sugar which is not a problem and that simulates a nectar flow pretty much meaning that it, the bees will think okay there's some form of nectar around and they will start laying more eggs pretty much so that I can get more bees a lot faster and another kind of feed that you can feed them if you want to build like comb I believe you feed like a, a one-to-one -one, means one part sugar one part water so that's pretty much what you can feed them now when I know in the US you guys use white sugar I believe but you guys might see, see me using brown sugar today and that's because our association says that our bee association says that um, well, my mom told me that the brown sugar is perfectly fine because in Jamaica we actually produce our own sugar so I don't believe that it will disorient the bees or give them you know digestive issues or whatever it is that you know the sugar feed actually will you know cause to a hive and I've been doing this the brown sugar solution for maybe about two months or so and it's been working pretty fine before I was using white sugar and the results are pretty much the same so I think that's gonna be all right so anyway, I'm going to go get something to eat, then I'm going to start on the video, show you guys how I feed my hives, and yeah. telling you some of y'all that I'll be taking Kappa with me to the bees. Come on. Come boy. Come on. Your first time? Kapo, Come on. So he finally got out. He's just pretty much just exploring some crazy stuff. Let's just show you guys what I ate. Got to eat really quick. Um, I just got some patties. Some Jamaican good old beef patties. So I got one for cappuccino because he hasn't eaten as yet. And I got some porridge, just peanut porridge real quick. And orange juice. Capo, come boy. Come. Capo, come. Capo, come. Good boy, it's hot, it's hot. He's never had a patty before. He's gonna eat it soon though. So you want the patty in my hand, but you don't want that one down there. Boy, don't let me waste that patty. 
You know how many people overseas want this paddy man? He's not used to it, plus it's really hot too. Oh my god, did this dog really do that? Who doesn't eat a Krabby Patty? Boy, well, you know when the patty is good, when it's melting like that, jeez. Some just fell here and this is what he eating. And he got his food over there. That's kind of why I want to take him out with me when I go beekeeping, guys, because I want him to get used to being in different locations because he's acting strange. Like usually, that would be like gone. All right, finally. You're about to embarrass me, bro. All right, guys, so I'm pretty much actually by the hives right now. I got Capo all tied up, you know, because I don't want him to be messing down there and the bees to, you know, come get him and stuff. So he's a little bit away. But what I'm going to be doing anyway does not require me to really mess with the hives, as in I won't be going inside and disturbing, disturbing them a lot. So, of course, y'all know, smoke the hive. Give it a nice bit of smoke. You might hear him crying up there for no reason. But I'd rather him doing that than actually crying for a reason. As you guys can see, like here, I'm feeding them just putting just the sugar in the bag and putting a little bit of water on top. That's sufficient, but that's pretty much a type of feed to, how can I say, to sustain them. But when you have like a fluid feed, as I said, that will let them think that there's like a nectar flow and they will actually start, you know, eating a lot more, eating it a lot faster and so on. I was over here maybe like four days ago and still laying down with this. So I'm gonna just get rid of this real quick. So I pretty much just got them out. As you guys might see, like I have like a, a empty hive top up here, a hive, a hive body up top. Pretty much just to give the hive some space so that I can put the container in. So all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna be using like a recycled container, mixing the sugar and water solution. Remember I said I'm gonna be using uh, pretty much one part sugar, two parts water, maybe a little bit more sugar than that. And then I'm gonna set it up inside of here. I'm doing it in a rocket science. I'm just using a rough estimate. I'm not measuring anything, I'm trying to be all scientific or nothing like that. We ain't, we ain't no chemistry class. I'm just pouring some sugar in. And then I'm gonna toss some water in there. You guys might not be seeing me so good, but that's all right. We'll fix that on another video. And then I'm just gonna mix it in. So I'm gonna pretty much be doing real quick. Just mix it in. But here's a here's a the funny thing about this guys. Like if you put this in there like that, then you're gonna pretty much be drowning your bees. You're gonna pretty much find like a whole pile of bees on top and they're pretty much gonna be just like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give them like a step ladder so they can actually go down onto it. Some of the bees are smart and they will actually just hang here and drink, but when everyone is trying to eat, they're going to be pushing each other in. So I'm going to add some step ladders so that if they fall in, they can climb out. And then when the feed starts going down, they can actually climb down into it. Also, I'm going to put um, like a float in the middle, just in case if any one of them flies and lands, they can drink from the inside. So I'm just doing this haphazard, like you don't have to worry about leaves getting into the sugar and be like, oh my gosh, leaves are in the sugar. They don't really care about that. And then another thing is guys, Whenever, the bees are pretty much smart too. Like whenever there's a nectar flow, they will not be drinking this anymore. They're not gonna take the natural thing over this artificial source at the moment. So this is not how people get honey sugar, like sugar to be in their honey or whatever the case is. This is just like a feeding process. All right guys, and that pretty much just took me like not even two minutes to get it done. So I just got some wire meshing and I put it down into it so if they, if they fall in, they can easily climb out. I've been using this for a while and it's been working wonders. Um, this, of course, if they fall in, they can obviously swim, climb up, get to the edges, so it's no problem for them. This is pretty much just a corrugated um, corrugated uh, cardboard, but it's a plastic type and um, it has air pockets, so it will not sink at all. So that will always be floating. Um, this, of course, is just a gallon, an empty gallon plastic jug that I had. I just cut it. Hey, you need to cut it. 
Bro, bro, if you come over here, you're gonna get stung. It's simple. But anyway, yeah, you got this plastic um, container. So you can just set, this is an easy setup, guys. It doesn't take long. Because if you were to buy like um, one of the feeders or anything like that, yo, it's gonna cost you maybe like 10 bucks or so. And this probably cost me like, I don't even know. There's all recycled items, so it's really cheap. And yeah, so these guys are pretty much still in here chowing down on that what i was going to do was to take out this and i was going to take this out and then put it into the water but i don't have the time to be getting rid of the bees so i'm gonna leave it like this and you realize like they pretty much chewed their own little holes through it and they you know they have their own exits but this is also food for them as well so i'm guessing this would be done in like maybe like four or five days depending on how hungry they are um in america they pretty much call this um what you call it spring feeding but in jamaica right now it's not spring because we have just one weather generally throughout the year but i realized during like january february they are just starting up so this feed would be good for them i'm gonna take a quick look on this hive over here this hive i brought this over here with a queen but somehow this hive is doing a lot better than it you know, some hives just have, you know, better characteristics. So that's a good thing. So I'm going to check out this feeder that I had set up in here. Of course, smoke the hive. And then see what's up. All right, so in this hive, I had a, a few deaths. Not a few deaths, maybe a couple hundred ones because I did the stupid thing. I know that you have to give them ways to climb down. You have to give them floaties and I did not do that. And I lost a few hives. I lost a few bees, sorry. But see this one, I have the same concept. I love this container. It's actually a water, water jug. I love this container and I've been using it. So all I'm gonna do is just mix some sugar, throw it in that and put a floaty in the middle and it will be good. I see a few hive beetles. Hmm. Uh, let's take this out really quick. Pop this down here. I just saw maybe like three hive beetles, but I don't see any sign of a bad colony breed up or nothing. Just check on there. Yeah, seems alright. I'm gonna feed this real quick. For those of you who are new to beekeeping, those are hive beetles right there. So that oh he flew off. God damn, we gotta kill him. It's just easy. Just take your finger, just push them, or use your hive tool. There we go. He dead. Um, every hive pretty much always has hive beetles, but those are there because of course they could climb under here, under the bottom of this, and the bees could not get to it. And this hive isn't really a really strong hive, so. Just an FYI, if you guys before I forgot to forget to mention it to you guys, um, you don't have to, you know, bring the sugar out here and then mix whatever inside of it. You can just mix like the sugar and water in a bucket. That's a lot easier. But because I'm not feeding that many hives, I just did it this way at the moment. It's quicker for me. And another thing, you realize like this hive, I fed them inside here, and this hive I gave a top feeder. If you don't have a top feeder, this method has worked for me perfectly fine. Like, I think one, two, three, four, five, six. These six frames have the bees on it, right? But there's like a frame that's still a bit empty and they still have frames to really fill out and really work. So this space they won't be using for now. The only bad thing about this is that if you're not watching your hives, they will start building comb all about. But I know how they're developing at the moment so I can use this free space instead of putting on a top hive up top, which can also cause another problem because more space they have, then it's a lot harder to keep themselves warm or to you know whatever the case is or to protect themselves so at the moment this method can work for me it's just about how you see your bees operating and what you think is best pretty much there we go this is done got a float inside got two ladders so even if they fall in they can still climb back out after a while when they fall in they'll pretty much figure out how to get to it easily because they have good memories and directions and stuff like that um you might realize before i had like some straws before I just picked like some of these and just pop them in there. So if you don't have corrugated board, you can put like some straws along there 
and it will work just the same and yeah pretty much that's another way that I feed my hives and it works now this hive pretty much is a nuke well it's still a nuke it's only got five frames and with this hive I feed them just this way because I had to build this little thing I just you know knock some wood together to create a space up top so I could put some sugar feed inside you can do whatever works with you but this is what I do for them and I think this is okay normally I would just add a little bit of water on top to wet it a bit what I was supposed to bring was like a container like a flat container that I could actually put the sugar and water but yeah so I'm gonna do I'm just gonna put the, the dry sugar inside of here again and I would just call it a day all right guys and that pretty much is gonna wrap up the video today like if you guys were here because you wanted to learn a bit more about beekeeping well thanks for watching the video if you're not subscribed then definitely do that um, for those of you who are here for my little adventure vlogs that I take them I'm gonna end this video here and I'm gonna start on that video because that's where I'm heading right now I'm heading to the river to go take a shower and just chill a little bit remember these three things guys love nature adaptation and always remember keep the link Lord, I